And uh, what they want is they want us to construct a line perpendicular to the given line and a, uh, and a point not on the line. So we have a given line and a point not on the line. Now, you were doing this. You were finding opposite reciprocal slopes, and you were doing this algebraically. <clears throat> well, this predates algebra. These constructions go back thousands of years. Uh, algebra and geometry were only uh, put together 700 years ago by Rene Descartes, a uh, French mathematician uh, that we know of. Uh, that was the, most, the first uh, combination that we have a record of. Um, and so what we want is, just to give you an, an example, we want a line and a point on the line, and we want it to go through uh, right there at a perpendicular. Okay, now the concepts are: I cannot find, I cannot find the middle of a line, so I need to carve out a line segment. So one, I need a line segment. So I need a line segment. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is a line segment. And I'm going to get out one of my geometry tools, which is, ta-da, our compass. Here we go. And um, I'm going to, get my little point here, I'm going to put this on the only point I know, which is the point that's not on the line. That's really the only point I know. All the other points, there's an infinite number of points on the line, but I haven't identified them. And I'm going to open this up. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to open this up and reach it out to the line. Okay. Now, <clears throat> once again, I don't want to be so short that I would miss the line. And I don't want to be so short that I barely touch the line. And I don't want to be so big that I'm way extended. I want a nice distance where I have the line there. I've got a line there. And I got a line there. Oops, I see I'd be way to the end of the line. So I'm adjusting this so that I know that I'm going to carve out a little segment right there. A little smile. Now, I'm only doing portions of circles. Some people, some teachers do the whole circle. I find that gets a little too messy for me. So I can only put this pointy part on the point I know. So there it is. I've opened my compass up so that it's going to make a nice smile that goes across the line. Not too small, not too big. And there you go. So I did that. Now, I now have a line segment. And one of the first constructions we learned was making a perpendicular bisector of the segment. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to do the perpendicular bisector construction. Okay, so we're going to do the perpendicular bisector of a segment. So you can do the perpendicular bisector, and you're like, well, what about the point? Don't worry. This point is now right in the center, hovering over the center of the segment. So now when I do a perpendicular bisector, I'll be in good shape. Now remember, on a perpendicular bisector, we want to, I'm just gonna ignore this point for right now. We wanna open this, not halfway, not all the way, but about three quarters away by eyeball. And then we do a swoop below and above. Then we go to the other intersection in green here. And then we swoop it above and below. Again, you could have done three full circles but I wanted to focus on the part we have here. All right, now part of doing the perpendicular bisector is connecting these two ends. And check out, when I get a straight edge, when I get a straight edge, check out what happens. I put it down there. I have to kind of get this here. I've got to kind of get it set up. I got to do a little finagling. All right, okay. And when I draw the line through there, through each of the tails, it intersects that point. So by 
carbon out of line segment and then finding the perpendicular bisector of that line segment, and that's from a prior lesson, this perpendicular bisector of that segment also goes to that point. And since the sector segment is part of the line, I have a perpendicular line to the line going to that point. And that's the construction of a line perpendicular to a given line and a point not on the line. There's not a lot to it, but you have to practice it. <clears throat> you have to practice it. So by, while reviewing the videos, by reviewing this video and then practicing, it'll become second nature to you. If you don't practice, it won't be second nature to you. It'll be difficult. Um, so again, you have to practice. This one is probably the most difficult one because it's going to require, like this one right here, require that we go back and look at the perpendicular bisector construction. So if you don't know that perpendicular bisector construction, then it's gonna be hard to do the more advanced constructions. All the geometry is pretty much scaffolded. So you need the bottom lessons to do the harder lessons for most of it. Um, un unlike Algebra 2, Algebra 2 will be a, like a collection of short stories where if you don't get one of the ideas, you might be okay for uh, the other stories. Whereas geometry is like a novel. And if you don't get the first few chapters, the third, fourth, fifth chapters start to not make sense. And so you might have to go back in the modules and you might have to go back where we did our construction here in topic seven. You might have to go all the way back then to topic seven and look at the videos because those lay in to these constructions right here. Okay, so this one's gonna re require that we remember how to copy an angle. So let me just kind of move this out of the way and uh, let me uh, do this one. Uh, let's see, we got some of this construction in the way. Okay, we'll, we'll be okay, I think. Um, what we want, the concept here that we want is we want a line with a point not on the line and then we want to draw a new line that goes through that point that is parallel with the existing line. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the concepts we learned before about two parallel lines cut by a transversal. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the concept that corresponding angles are congruent. And of course, if lines are parallel and cut by a transversal, corresponding angles are congruent. So the inverse statement is also true. If corresponding angles are congruent, the lines are parallel. So that's the basic idea, is we're gonna have this, we're gonna run a transversal, we're gonna copy this angle to correspond with what will eventually be up here, and then we'll run this line through. That's the general plan. <clears throat> so with that, uh, with that, I am going to go ahead and draw a transversal. So number one, we're going to draw a transversal. So number one, make a transversal. I'm this, this one's kind of, this thing up here is kind of bothering me. I'll try to get through it. Uh, make what will eventually be a transversal. Make or draw a transversal. And it doesn't matter if you go this way or if you go this way, but I'm gonna go this way. Uh, it's your choice, but I'm gonna go that way for this example. And so I need what will be a transversal. And I don't want it to be too large. And I'll do it in blue. So from here, I just need a line that goes through both of them, okay? And maybe I'll make it a little thicker. Okay, there we go. So that's gonna be my transversal. Now, one thing that you should do is, let me redraw this. You really wanna make sure you have plenty of room above that point. So I'm going to give it a little extra room because I need as much room up here as I can because I need to get this angle and this angle matched up. All right, that's number one. Uh, the second one is you're going to copy an angle. Okay, you're going to copy an angle. You're going to be copying the angle. You're going to copy an angle. 
And uh, the angle I want to copy is this one. I could copy the obtuse one, but it's hard enough to copy an angle. I'm going to copy the acute one. So now we have to go back to the original problem of copying an acute angle. And the way we do it is we put that point on the intersection, the transversal and the, par and the line that will eventually be parallel. And this blue line is not a transversal yet, but eventually it will be. And I kind of look at that and I kind of look at that and I make sure that my pencil's not off the line or I have to extend the line. So I kind of look at that, I kind of look at that. I don't want it too small, I don't want it too big. And I'm like, yeah, that distance will fit and that distance will fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw an arc from this point right here. So I'm gonna draw an arc. Draw an arc. There we go. And then I travel up what will be the transversal to the other point. So I got a vertex point and what will eventually be a vertex point. And I copy that arc and I go way overboard. I almost do a full circle, but a good half circle so I have plenty of room. So that was the first stop, step in copying an angle was um, identical, uh, uh, radi ident identical um, arcs drawn, uh, arcs drawn from the same distance from the point to the line. The next thing I need to do is from top to bottom, I need to measure how much arc is from this line to this line. How much arc is between this line and this line? So I got to move this thing in because I'm going to use my compass as a measuring device. I'm going to, and this one, you, you might be off a little. Look how my screen, I, can only, I can't get in between exactly where I want to be. So I, I'm going to be slightly off, but the general concept is the same. And you're probably using a school compass, and those are like 98 cent compasses. Um, you know, they're, they're not the most, the most detailed tools. So oh, I've got the measurement from top to bottom, so I make a little proof mark. Okay, then I travel back up, not to this point, but to the arc. So top of the arc to the bottom, I travel back up, top of the arc, and I mark the bottom. I don't change the compass. I'm keeping the same measurement from here to here. Here to here. Okay. Your line probably won't look super parallel because the compass is a little wobbly. It's not a super precise compass. But <clears throat> the final thing is all I have to do is connect. All I have to do is connect now the given point, not on the line, and the arc with the proof mark. All I have to do is connect that to that, and I should be in good shape. So let's see here. I'm going to connect that to that. All right. All right. I'm going to connect that. Oops, I gotta use a ruler. I get my ruler here. You should use a straight edge. So I'm gonna get my straight edge and I gotta finagle it a little bit. It's kind of jumpy. See, it's it's not gonna let me, it's not gonna let me get much precision here. It's not going to let me get very much precision. Uh, so anyway, uh, it, it'll be close enough for this. And so um, it's, a, it's a little jumpy. This needed to be up a little bit more. It's not going to look perfectly perpendicular, and that's because of my tools. But essentially, uh, that would give you, if I had a little more, more finesse on those tools, I would have this line and this line being really, really parallel. I'll, I'll show you real quick uh, the key I'll post which uh, I use some pretty decent tools. Um, you'll see I got a much better parallel line when I was using a much better compass. Um, I have a compass that I use that's not 98 cents, it's more like 10 bucks and it's a little more accurate. If you're doing construction or if you're doing woodworking, um, I, I, I've, I usually use some pretty good uh, compass and, uh, and straight edges. So that is the second construction. And then one of the easiest ones is number three, which is the same as number one. We're going to do the same things. Even though the point's not on the line, 
and here it's on the line, we still have to carve out a segment from this line. So this three and two are going to look very similar. Three and two are look, going to look very similar. I, um, I open up the, I kind of get my compass, and I open it up, and I don't want to be too much, but uh, let me get my compass up here. Work from the top. So I get my compass here, and I don't want to be too close to the point, I don't want to be too far away, and I carve out a line segment. That's just basically, you know, I call it a smile. You could do the full circle, <clears throat> but if you compare this to number one, you see that it's essentially starting the same way. And in fact, it's all the same movements. I carve out a line segment, number one. Carve out a line segment. <clears throat> carve out a line segment. Segment. I did that and then do a perpendicular bisector. Go back and do the perpendicular bisector of a segment. Doing the bi perpendicular bisector construction. And again, if you don't remember that, go back and look at topic seven because that is how we finish this up. And most of this is me trying to write with a mouse. All right, so to carve out a perpendicular bisector, again, you will go to the ends of that segment. <clears throat> and if you don't open the compass bigger, you're gonna be right on top of that point. Too small and it won't meet, okay? Too big, you might go off the page. So you go about three quarters of this segment, segment from here to here, okay? And by the way, there's you can look these up on, the, uh, on Yahoo, not Yahoo, YouTube, you look at this up on YouTube and see other teachers doing this. If you're like, ah, I want to hear another person, sometimes hearing another voice uh, or another teacher uh, can, can help you uh, connect the two um, instructions. So uh, you, you might do that. Okay, I'm going to change this to red so we can see the difference between the red and the blue. And I go below and above, then I go below and above, and they will connect. And again, you could do three full circles if you really want to. I'm just doing portions of circles. And now if I connect the top intersection of the red and the bottom intersection of the red, I should have a perpendicular line to this line, and it will go through that point because I forced that point to be the middle of that segment by using it to carve out the segment. So I need to grab my ruler. <clears throat> I need to grab the ruler and I need to get it, I need to finagle it so that it is on there. And of course it did, it, it, I wish they gave me a little more leeway with this. Wow, they really don't give me much room. Well, you do that, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use their straight line tool because their this straight line is not letting me do what I wanna do. And then I'm going to move this, get my pen. I'll do it in orange because I like different colors. And so I will just uh, connect that to that. And they're still making me, they still won't give me much room. Wow, they really won't let me be as precise as if I want. I was hoping I went further. Anyway, connect the top to the bottom, and this whiteboard won't let me do exactly, but connect that to that, it will go through that, <clears throat> and it will be through the point and perpendicular to the line. And uh, there you go, That's, uh, those are the constructions.